uh, but su succession planning is, is pretty unique. So um, the question I have here for you is as for which levels have you created a formal succession plan? All right, and so I know it's different for each company and also for different parts around the world, um, but let's see what people say as far as succession planning goes. And then once we, we start, we have this uh, poll responses. Uh, Yolkum, I'm curious, I'll be curious about your thoughts how you're, how you're working with succession plans out there, again, given the size and the scope of, of Hubner and, and what you do, uh, I'm really interested to hear you know, how you handle that out there. Yeah, we, we started, uh, as I uh, started in Hübner, I implemented uh, first a succession planning uh, eight years ago uh, because there was nothing available. And I uh, started the discussion to think about what are the key positions what are the key persons? And so we come into a good dialogue between management and HR. And between the management, we have implemented this dialogue during the last years. So we have now a succession planning for key positions where we think about what happens if we need a successor. So, and we, we have some development plans and also we have a of course, succession plans, where we always have to look to our talents, because that is one of the pipelines we have to use. So, and first we have done it from the top. And then of course we have bring it in each business area. Then we have uh, implemented the discussion in the different regions. And after eight years, I can say, okay, we are in a, a good level of discussion, but we have some roof some room for improvements, definitely. So <laughs> there are some regions in the world I'm not really satisfied and uh, we have to change. Interesting. And I'm curious, do you do you have those that succession planning set up? Uh, is, it, is it based on level? So for all VPs or directors, or is it really up to the, the departmental heads or the regional leaders? Yeah. Um, both things. So we have key positions that not really linked to the management level. That also could be uh, uh, technical knowledge. Um, and we have, of course, uh, management functions in this discussion. So both points are important in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a very good point. Yeah. And I think depending upon the size of the company and, and really kind of the, the average tenure of the employees as well, that's going to, to some extent, that's going to dictate, you know, where you set up those programs also. Uh, and Jennifer, how about yourself and the, in the, with the clients that you're consulting for and the HR strategizing that you're doing, uh, and even back at Kia as well, what, what do you see out there? I, I think this is a very interesting um, discussion because many of us who have been in HR for a long time may have talked about, thought about, even started some succession planning, may have done it even on Excel spreadsheets and things like this, but um, the the pandemic and and sort of just what changed um, as a result of the pandemic really catapulted us into a huge necessity to more for you know to to formalize succession planning and I think um, whether it's for Kia we went through a lot of the same things and are still going through that as as other panelists have talked about or other organizations um, you know obviously starting with a very very strong platform that suits the organization and the people in the organization so that you don't have to work on those spreadsheets anymore <laughs> um but that's so key because that's going to help then with um communication and training um how we're communicating about it and how we're training top down and throughout the organization has changed drastically um over the past three years and and that's really essential to be able to do it and i agree with um, the other panelists that, you know, not only does it have to come from the top and start at the top and people at the top being willing to participate in the discussion, to participate in what it means to do succession planning, even for their own role. Um, <clears throat> but then throughout the organization with, um, with employees and managers really understanding what it means to have a career coaching conversation with their employees and understand what their goals are over time um, the, system, the system that Kia had implemented um, also was success factors and being able to identify somebody very young in their career and sort of how they see themselves, um, their trajectory within the organization or in their career in general is so key. Um, 
And so I think, and then, and then I think, you know, it, again, with somebody like me who hadn't planned on leaving the organization and then, and then, and then did, um, you know, you're forced to have those conversations and, and go through that process very quickly for certain positions, which then I think really demonstrates the need to have to do this across the board. But um, I really do think it starts with that sort of foundation and those those basic platforms of, of the system, the training and the communication in order to be able to successfully go through that process. And I'm seeing that throughout any organization. I've been in touch with a lot of different organizations and with Kia, it's, it's the same. And it sounds like it's the same globally. Um, right, we're, all going, right. we're all going through yeah. that. Exactly. Exactly. No, it's great. And I, I know, you know, from, even from a, a candidate perspective with all the recruiting that we do for our clients in the U S you know, quite often, especially at the mid and upper levels, you know, the candidates will ask us, you know, where can I go from here? If I take, if I, you know, if I um, kind of express interest in a certain position and I want to go through the process, you know, where can my career go from here within this company if I, if I join them? So that's become a really big part of the discovery that we do as, as, as search consultants with our clients and asking them, okay, you're looking to hire a VP of finance. Could this eventually evolve into CFO? Or you're trying to hire a head of operations? Could this go, you know, beyond that? Because candidates are really asking about that quite a bit. So there has to be that preparation beforehand to know how to address that question that comes up also. All right, I'm, I'm going to read the results here of this poll. Then Arpita, I want to get your thoughts also on what you do for succession planning. Um, so in terms of this, so we had 109 people that responded to this poll. Uh, again, asking about, you know, the succession planning levels. So it looks like the majority of people actually, surprisingly, about 55% don't have any formal succession plan at any level. So there, there's certainly some work to be done there. And that may be um, you know, a reflection of smaller companies, certainly. Uh, my company is seven people, and so it's a little bit harder to do that with seven people versus you know, 7,000. But um, so that's about 55%. Uh, then about 29% of you said that for managers and above, that's where you start your succession planning programs, and that's where those conversations are, are happening as well. And then for directors, so about 8% of, of companies do succession planning for directors and above, about 6% do it for VP level only and above, and then about 1%, um, so about what, two people or so, one person out of the 109 um, does uh, planning only for the C-suite, so only at the very, very top level. So I think from what you've heard, obviously, it's, it's important to implement across the board, if, if at all possible, and at least to start having the conversations, whether you have a formal board of, of you know, corporate board or a board of advisors, or even just the senior executive C-suite team getting together. It's really important to make sure you're talking about you know, the unfortunate what-if scenarios. Right. If one person has all the information and that person unfortunately gets hurt or injured or they leave the company, then what's going to happen? The company has to be prepared for that. So succession planning is really important from that perspective. Uh, Arpita, so what, what's happening for you in your, in your world in terms of succession planning? So um, I would have two parts of the answer. So almost uh, five to six years back, we introduced something called, uh, rather I started it in Myanmar first. Uh, key talent flight risk. So for us, the succession planning was not limited to only the C-suit candidates, I mean, the C-suit uh, employees or the VP levels. So it was the key talent, which I, many of my uh, colleagues also here uh, mentioned that. So we tried to address that who are the key talents, what are the challenges, who are happy in the role, who are not happy in the role, what are they expecting and how we can address the problem. So we were you know, continuously updating that. Eventually, in the last one or two years, we have also introduced a new uh, way of looking at succession planning, that is the uh, introducing the mission critical roles. So it's in a it's same thing on a different uh, way of looking at uh, the situation. So the mission critical roles are once again the roles which we cannot do without. So that can be once again a VP and above role, and it can be also a manager or senior manager. It, it depends upon the, uh, you know, the complexity of the role, the financial impact, the skill and the know-how of the role and um, in the risk of vacancy. So that's the way we are basically addressing the mission critical role. And then we are identifying internally who are ready now, who are ready after one year or who can be ready after three to, uh, I mean, two to three years. And looking at that, then we decide that whether we have to hire somebody now or we have to basically groom someone from within. So we are taking 
succession planning in a very very serious manner and we are working on it at all levels mostly manager and senior manager above and also the typical key positions which are like i have mentioned that we cannot do away without that's great that's great i love that yeah and, and it's not like you've done a good job also as an organization really identifying kind of analyzing and identifying those roles that are high impact that are critical positions that you've Absolutely. got to have a plan in place for definitely uh somebody um so so tracy had asked the question here from uh from the group does anybody use any particular technology or or software program or platform that allows you to track your succession planning programs so we are doing you know like we have introduced success factor this year so we are putting all these mcr and these materials into success factor as well so in a way we are tracking we are updating it in the system and we are tracking so there are point systems like if there is two successors who are ready now then there is a certain point so there is a mechanism which we follow over there also okay anybody else have a, a program or a, a, any kind of software that they use yeah still yeah we we, um, we also have success sorry i just wanted to share we also have success factors keep rolling it out that's yeah. you know we use as a core uh core uh you can say application system for basically people management processes all across Sim similar to kia as i mentioned same thing and and their succession planning platform does allow you to start at the very beginning with an employee's career path and sort of identify which positions which critical positions in the organization they would be able to um be ready for in time and it gives you a year, you know, two years, five years, 10 years, things like that. So it sounds like a, a several of us are, are success factors fans, not that it was intended <laughs> exactly right. to be a commercial for them. It should be our sponsor for the, uh, <laughs> That's for the right. webinar. Exactly. All right, good. Uh, Estelle, you had your hand up too. Do you, do you have a different system that you use other than success factors? Yeah, I think a little bit. So maybe the first thing is that I stopped to using succession as a term quite long a long time ago, maybe even 10 years ago, and replaced it with substitution. And why substitution makes uh, it more a leadership topic, more closer to the team leads that, OK, if someone is sick or someone is at holiday, someone is leaving the company, so who would substitute? And mm -hmm. the point gets across more easily. And the tools uh, I have been using before, not in Aurora at the moment, but before in a bit bigger companies has been the software that is used for budgeting, annual budgeting. Mm -hmm. So we basically incorporated the succession part to the budgeting process. And the main logic there was that, well, this is actually something leaders usually look at and take seriously. Succession tools may be overlooked easily, but budget never. Right. <laughs> and so, and this is like with, from this organizational sustainability point of view and also well-being of employees, meaning that you can actually be sick at home or be on holiday if there is someone who is willing to substitute you. And in small organizations, Estonia is a small country, so our companies are small as well. Uh, we are cross-functional. We have to be. You mm -hmm. cannot be just recruitment in HR. You need to do full cycle. Uh, of the HR works in order to manage the company because we do not have thousands of people. It's you know hundreds of people maximum. And one right. other thing is the sustainability from employee perspective. Uh, then uh, I've been using not the tool, but career counseling uh, consciously, meaning that leaders are not really often interested to discuss the topics outside of their scope, outside of the respective field or unit. But people are not so limited to their existing team, existing company. So it's basically offering the career counseling that is independent, is professional, and it has allowed me to, I'd say, know maybe half a year, maybe two years in advance if people are interested in leaving the company because there is just no career path for them mm -hmm. uh, inside current company. But they have left and they have came, came back. Mm -hmm. uh, because of this career counseling process within a few years. So it's, uh, yeah. That's great. Uh, That's great. Yeah. Budgeting software and career counseling are the tools. Right. That's no, I agree. Amazing. And I think, you know, no, ma no matter what technology you might use, kind of what you're talking about, it's not so much about the technology or the software. It's about the conversation, right? It's um, the, the communication has to happen, whether you're using Excel spreadsheets or a Word document or success factors, you know, it's, it's, it's less important about how you're tracking it and more important that you are tracking it. 
and that you are having those conversations. That's what people are looking for, especially the younger generation, right? Uh, even the, the younger millennials and Gen Z as well. Uh, I've got, you know, I've got two kids that are, that are Gen Zs and, you know, they're all always talking about what's going to be next, right? What's, what is my career path going to be? Where can I, where can it lead me to? And they're not afraid to ask those questions. And they're not afraid to ask the questions of very high level executives. And so we all as leaders have to be ready for that and, and be understanding of that and have, have an answer ready to go when that question does come up for sure. Definitely. Definitely.